So the third criterion here, let me quickly give you the, an over, the overview of the tongue content for which I'm going to cover and for which I wouldn't be able to cover. Uh, the first one is the criteria. static loading. Static loading just the case we have done, we've seen before. So for example, if we have the system like this, we are given a point loading and apply the loading slowly and until reaching the equilibrium. Quasi-static? Like, Quasi-static, quasi yes. So once the loading is there, and it can be any kind of the quasi-static loading, once the system is in static equilibrium, then we're asking the system will be safe or not. Then, which means we want to see is, say, the maximum string stress or maximum principal stress will be, over, will be exceeding the design criteria or not, something like this one. And so this is for static loading, and then the criteria we're going to introduce won't be that straightforward as we learned before, and using the single uh, justification by using. And the second type is the deferral uh, the criteria for dynamic, I would say, uh, cyclic loading. For the cycle loading, and that can be like this. So if this is the time, and this is the loading, and we could have this case. Okay, this is the sound and loading, and here this uh, is the sigma max, and here is sigma minimum. <coughs> Usually we categorize, we try to categorize such a curving using R, R is the ratio between the minimum and the maximum, okay? And also, uh, in addition to the R value, this is the mean. So usually we use the two parameters to, uh, categor to categorize the, and also the uh, frequencies, okay? So using the, the, the those values, we can define our loading type, and this kind of loading type basically will be something like this. You say, give you a wire, you simply do this way. Eventually, you know that getting hot and then easily broken. Uh, that is known to this case. And this one actually, uh, for this case, due to the such a loading, the, the failure usually is referred to as we call the fatigue. Okay, so uh, fatigue. Is a failure criteria is a fail, phenomenon of the material failures due to the cyclic loading. And the third one is called the fracture. The fracture just being the whole thing just tear off. And Chris has the best experience, probably. And you still owe me one experiment, right? Okay. The fracture basically is this. Um, um, very one famous example is um, this is not pig. Okay, this is not a pig. <laughs> you sure? No. Uh, this is not a pig. An airplane? Yes, this is an airplane. <laughs> a pig with a pig with a uh, Goggles. It's like an oxygen mask. <laughs> <laughs> and then, probably if I'll be higher by Boeing, I will design a tail like this. <laughs> <laughs> have a pig plane? <laughs> then I'll be fired. <laughs> <laughs> the very famous is uh, when they, uh, the uh, airplane, the Boeing, like Boeing, uh, Boeing, they do their testing is this. They land in on the ground, and then here they simply ap apply the uh, cycle loading to vibrate to simulate the vibration of the wind in air 
and then basically the cycles can go to um, a lot, one month, one you name it. And a lot of the cycling can be to the millions, the, in terms of the units of the millions. Okay, so they do the things, and then on one side, they want to determine whether this design would be safe uh, through the fatigue testing. But on the other side, if they would have any micro, here let me exaggerate, if the material has any defect there, such a defect is the where that along this side, that is this case. So this is the, we call this material defect, and where that is, is they can uh, concentrate the stress. So stress concentration will be easily accumulated very quickly here. So around this region, so starting from there, they will have the plastic deformation, or we call the plasticity will occur. And right now, just telling stories, okay? Don't be so serious. So you like to take a, take a nap, and that's what they could be the best time. <laughs> so this plasticity and will be gradually expanding depends on the uh, time, durations, and the magnitude of the loading. And then in the meantime, the plasticity will increase, will enhance, not enhance, will facilitate the growing of the crack. So here is the, what we call the crack growing. G-R-O-W. And the crack growing can be very serious. And the crack growing basically always starting from the micro, the tiny uh, defects of the material. And the growing of the crack can be stable, can be unstable. For the stable cracking, that means the cracking will be controlled. It won't grow. It would grow, but it will grow and stop. They call the stable cracking, and that is a very good. That is a scenario we're looking for. If for unstable cracking, unstable cracking is this: once the crack grow until a certain threshold, and if the loading condition is still there, then once the cracking size of the cracking get to the threshold, then the cracking will be automatically propagated, propagate by its own. What I mean, what I mean, that means just like the windshield. I think windshield is the very good, good example. Initially, you have a dent there, and then you could be bombarded by uh, stones, and then you see the crack of it suddenly just go from this end to that. And that is we, uh, one uh, example of unstable crack. Unstable crack, and that means the crack just be growing on its own without additional energy. That is the one we don't want to see, because in particular for this wing, you can see if the cracking it become unstable, that means the whole thing will be go away. The this one fracture mechanics, and usually this one belongs to a graduate level, graduate school, and this one just talk about this kind of the cracking these things. Okay, and that is very very interesting topics, but more involved in mathematics and more concept. So in this in this portion, I will be only provide you this one, and we don't have time to go over those things. Although I have a little um, uh, lecture notes prepared for those things, but probably we won't have time. Okay, just give us a scope here. And this one, uh, I uploaded two lecture notes uh, onto the blackboard, and you go to the, uh, the very first download of the R, and you should be able to find them. And this one also, if you go to our textbook, chapter seven, I think the chapter seven is about the more uh, circles. And in one section, and then we start for it, uh, it's called the uh, failure criteria. And from there, that is the, I think that is the only section in our textbook uh, describing this one only. And part of my lecture notes are based on this and give you more extensions for this one, okay? So, so that is the overall introduction for this. Um, so the next one I will start with from here.